Hey folks, well, so I screwed up. Uh, recently I reinstalled the software, or I guess I updated the firmware on my little cameras. And one of the things it does during that process is it resets the camera to default. And that means the time-lapse video, um, it instead of taking a shot every tenth of a second or whatever I normally use, I can't remember which setting it is, it's the lowest setting, it resets it to one picture every 60 seconds. And so I have many hours of footage of one shot every 60 seconds, and it's just not usable. So um, here's a quick montage of it as you're seeing on screen, it's worthless. I'm not even gonna try to talk to it. Instead, I'm gonna show some of the footage that I actually recorded uh, in real time, where I talk about the uh, fairings and the fiberglass stuff. Sorry, uh, this is not only embarrassing, it's depressing, because I did have some good stuff I wanted to go over, but uh, hopefully I can still convey the message, and I will intermix in a bunch of pictures and other things so that uh, I'm hoping the message will get across. Anyway, here we go. So a lot of this section is about creating the fiberglass that goes on the ends of the fairing. And you can see here in this slowed down video footage that there's fiberglass laying on top of a piece of foam that I cut out to fit inside there as a rib. And there on the table, you can actually see the part that I'm working on. And eventually I pick it up and I spend a bunch of time shaping it to make sure it, it's the right shape. The right shape being, of course, the inside of this fairing tip. That opening that you see there has got to be closed off. My first attempt was just to use a piece of cardboard in there, but I found that the cardboard kind of crushes over time, uh, and so that's when I went with the foam. It also crushes, but it's not quite as bad, and I find that the cardboard and foam work together very nicely. However, they don't take into account the fact that the, the uh, fiberglass piece itself has to be cut a little bit uh, in order to uh, make the dog leg shape. So you can see that this end piece is what I'm talking about. Uh, it goes here, right? And it fits nicely once you get it you know, cut correctly and it, you know, it'll, it'll pull up and be even, be flush like that once you get it all riveted in. But this piece, this edge right here is a little too long. As you can see, this bottom here, it can't move upwards because of this long edge. So you end up having to cut it. The problem is once you cut it, the gap between this edge and this edge is about a centimeter. I say problem, it's not a problem, it's just how it is. And the other thing is it's not a straight line. It kind of, there's kind of a, a, a dog leg here. It goes in this way and then goes that way, you know. So you, you have to cut this accordingly. Well, that still leaves this big open gap. I mean, if this is here and there's this big open gap, that's not good. And so you, you do a, a uh, fiberglass sheet over on this way. Once that's cured, you then go inside and do some more. You do several layups of, fiber, you know, layers of fiberglass. Uh, to finalize and cure the piece. The problem is I'm a complete noob when it comes to working with fiberglass. I mean, it's just not something I've ever had to do before. So, uh, as you can see, this is my first attempt. I've got the piece correctly, well, I say correctly, I've got the piece covered in the fiberglass. I've gone ahead and I put the resin over the top of it. I just want this top piece to harden. I'll then cut it out along the border and then come in from the inside and do several more layers on the inside. I've probably used too much resin. I don't know. I've never done this before. I figure worst case scenario, it's completely unusable and I have to repurchase that fairing tip. Okay, that's, that's, you know, that's not a big deal. Um, hopefully it comes out. We'll see. I'll show you again in a couple days. I really wish I had a lot more video of me actually putting this stuff together. It is a little messy, and I'll have more video of it here later on in this particular episode. I just wanted you to see my first attempt, which, to be honest, was horrifying uh, and a little amusing. Okay, so as you might imagine, from watching that train wreck that you didn't get to see because I screwed up my cameras...
Uh, I've never used resin or fiberglass or anything like this before, so this is a whole new thing for me. What I did was I bought this polyester fiberglass resin kit, which came with some fiberglass, but I wanted to get some of this nicer stuff too. And I have basically done what I could here to make this end piece happen. All right, it's the next day. We've got uh, the resin is all cured, and so let's see how we did. All right, so it's definitely hard. There's, uh, it's almost like I had a, a lot of resin out here and not quite enough in here, so maybe I uh, need to put another coat on here. It's definitely solid. Uh, I, it starts to peel off on the sides here just nicely. I'm going to go through here and cut right along here to uh, so I can remove all this excess. I think if anything, uh, the issue I have is I probably should not have done this overlapping and folded over. I thought I was being clever by folding it over and taping it to keep this area taut. I don't know that that was necessary. Um, I think really probably that was uh, the wrong thing to do. But live and learn. I've never done this before, so I'm actually not unhappy with this. And I will show you what it looks like after I've uh, cleaned it up. And then we get to work on the inside. Fun. Well, so here is halfway through production. You can see I've still got a lot of flashing all along here that I need to get rid of. And you can see that it's kind of bent inwards a little bit, right, right here. And that's not what I was going for. I'm not sure why that happened. I think when I made the rib, I made it a little too wide. And so now it's got this bowing. Weirdly, that actually kind of works. That, that dishing actually kind of works because as this moves up and down, it kind of moves ever so slightly into that space. So in some ways it works. But I may give it a cut right here to try to bring these you know, more flush. And I think on the next version of this on the other side, I'm going to do it actually mounted on the plane, apply the epoxy and whatnot right on the plane so that uh, it gets the correct size. Not bad for a first attempt, not wonderful for a first attempt, but uh, I think I can, I can salvage it. It's, it's in a good place. So there you go. All right, so you can see I'm doing this one slightly differently. I put the foam in while it's mounted on the plane itself, and then I've got this piece of cardboard that I'm going to put in here that will be what I'm uh, actually working on top of. The reason I'm doing this is so that when I lay the uh, fiberglass on here and I start applying the resin, it doesn't stick to the foam. I had a little bit of problem previously where the foam kind of got chewed up a little bit and it's on the inside of the other piece of fiberglass. I'm going to have to fix that on the other side. I may end up having to do the other side over entirely. We shall see. One uh, piece of advice I got was to use aluminum foil. So you take something like this, put aluminum foil over it, mount it in here, and then do your resin work on top of that. I don't know if that'd work or not. Seems logical. But I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to put something on here to keep this from being, you know, getting goop on it, keep it protected, and then I'm going to put uh, a whole bunch of resin on here. But fun. And now we're back to regular video after I had noticed my screw up with the cameras. So back to your regular scheduled program. I decided to go ahead and use the aluminum foil, as I discussed or, or mentioned, and it worked out very nicely. Uh, if I had not, I think the resin would have just stuck to the cardboard. So the aluminum foil on the cardboard piece worked out beautifully. And that's what I'm installing here. And then I start working on adding the mesh. And I did the same thing uh, that I did on the other side. Uh, I actually folded the mesh under and just taped it up and had it taut and, you know, made it look nice in the exact shape that I ultimately was going for, uh, and then I started mixing my uh, resin. And uh, here you see me pacing back and forth, mixing, 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 more mixing, for a couple minutes, actually. Once it gets thoroughly mixed, I pull out the uh, spatula and begin applying it. And I'll tell you what, the spatula is really handy. They, they send you this little handheld widget that you're supposed to use to apply it. It's basically the spatula without the stick. But just going to the store and buying a cheap $1.50 spatula, 
Just do that. Trust me. Okay, so here's the other side. This, If you recall, this is the one that I actually uh, applied the resin while it was on the aircraft itself. I'm actually pretty thoroughly happy with it. There's a little bit of a bubble right here. It's not even a bubble. I'm not even sure if you can see that. It's not a bubble so much as just a accumulation of the resin because it all ran downhill. It was, you know, sitting like this. And so that bottom corner there, and I say corner, it's on a round surface, but this area right here got a little extra resin on it. Um, well, that's nothing I can't just buff off using the uh, wheel. And it's a lot thicker. Like, it's it's much sturdier. I'm, I'm actually very happy with that. Just a matter of going through and cleaning all this off. And I'll put some on the inside here so that this piece is adhered to the actual, uh, the actual part. And then uh, that's done. This has actually not been too bad. The, the whole fiberglass thing, I was a little concerned about it because I've just not done fiberglass. As to the other one, this one, it had this weird um, bowing inward, and you can see I've, I've cut it, and I've re-glued that, and I'm probably going to go ahead and apply another, um, another piece of fiberglass here and re-resin it. Uh, just because this one's not as sturdy as the other one, and I think it's because I did not do the mixture correctly on the resin. So that's what I'm here to do today. And sure enough, that's what I did. I spent the rest of this day going through and cutting out the necessary fabric to, you know, to, to make it uh, work over there. Uh, it did come out good. I'll show you that in a sec. And of course, you know, it's, it's always nice to have validation. Uh, it's nice to have someone that you know and trust to come along and tell you when you're doing a good job or a bad job, etc. And, you know, invariably for me, they come along exactly when I don't want them to. <laughs> so this, this, that side was the one side that I didn't really feel like I did good job on. And so of course, here comes Lynn to let me know that, you know what? No, it actually looks just fine. Looks just like what it should look like and it'll be okay. So thank you, Lynn. I appreciate it. He and I also discussed what's called oil canning, which I will get to at the end of this episode. Once he was gone, I mixed up my resin. Uh, again, mixing, mixing, mixing. That's me marching back and forth. And then I went over with yield trusty spatula and just applied it like I talked about previously. And I'll show you the results of that here shortly. Uh, and I also uh, began applying it to the inside of the other one, which again, I will give you some real-time video on that. Here we go. Okay, so here's what I've done. Um, you can see here that I've added some more cloth and some more resin, and I've done it in place just I did like I did the last one. And, of course, I've got some protective stuff on here because there is drippage. Uh, dripping is going to happen. It's not a big deal. You know, it's uh, it's a resin. Whole area smells like resin. I, I opened the hanger just a little bit to help ventilate. The next thing I did, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, is I went through and I started the reinforcing process on the inside in there by coating several different pieces of fiberglass along that rounded crease on the inside and then just dousing it with resin. Uh, a couple f observations. One. There probably is such a thing as too much resin, but let's be honest, where this is going to go, you're not going to really be able to see it. So putting a bunch of resin on there, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you, it gives you plenty to sand off. You want to make sure that there's clearance when, you're, when the elevators are moving up and down. So I figure if I have more resin, it gives me a little room to sand some things off. Two, get a spatula. Spatula make easy. Uh, and you just wipe the spatula off. The resin just wipes off with a paper towel. It's actually not particularly sticky, uh, but it is a little little tacky. And so to that end, I would recommend either latex gloves um, or some something to protect your hands. The thickener that goes in the uh, in the resin probably because it's such a powder you might want to consider a respirator i probably should get a respirator if i'm going to be doing a lot of that since i'm using such very small amounts of it i i have not been doing a respirator but if i end up doing a lot more fiberglass work which is always possible i will i will be uh getting a respirator of some kind so finally i had talked about this previously on one of the other videos right here and i've got this upwards because i'm still 
letting that dry over there. But right here, I've got a little oil canning going on. It's the only place on my plane that I found oil canning is this one square, uh, which upsets me a little. Well, I talked to Lynn, uh, my fellow who, who has built RVs before, and he said, you know, the best way to deal with that is you give this a good solid whack with, you know, a mallet intentionally denting it, and then you use the Bondo stuff to cover that up, and that won't happen anymore. From what I've read and what other people have told me, oil canning is a bad thing because it will do that while you're flying. There's a lot of stresses at the end of the plane here, uh, and it can cause damage over time. So uh, I probably will end up doing what they suggest and will show you what that looks like when that happens. Fun.